Good morning. Hi, guys. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I have to say that twice because yesterday I went the entire day like it was Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know why, but for whatever reason, my brain just thought that yesterday was Wednesday all day, which kind of makes your life difficult when you finally realize, okay, it's not, it's only Tuesday and all of the things that you've done that could have, you know, okay, well, anyway, it's just a thing, but it is finally Wednesday <laughs> for my brain and now I'm all caught up. How's everybody doing? Are we enjoying these prime deals? Oh gosh, you guys, they're so good. They're so, so good. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Stacia. Hey, Trisha. How is everybody? Rosalinda, good morning to you, my dear. And Tina, so good to see you guys. So today is a fun day, which I don't know why I thought yesterday was today. <laughs> because you just can't put together this kind of fun twice. Well, I mean, I guess you could, but you know, I don't know. So today's deals are awesome, you guys. These are so awesome. So today is a little bit different. It's the middle of the week. We're right in the middle of our Prime Day deals. And so we thought we would kind of melt together Dress It Up Buttons and Jesse James Beads, right? So much fun. So what is that gonna mean? Well, I'll let you know here in just a second. <laughs> but first, but first, let's talk about free seed bead trios with $24 cards. That's a good one, you guys, that's a good one. So the trios are these guys, you guys know, or some of you may not know. Some of you may be new to Jesse James beads. Some of you may be new to dress it up buttons. Some of you maybe haven't tried out the Prime Day deals yet. And this is a really good one to kind of get you started. If you've never participated in the Prime Day deals, this is a good one. It only requires a $24 cart and you get three, or you get the little trio of the seed beads, which these guys are so much fun. The colors are so beautiful. The beads are like top notch quality and they work really well with all of your other Jesse James beads. So maybe order some of the strands, the new strands that we showed last night. Get your seed beads and put your little seed beads between all of the beads in your strands and you've got a beautiful piece of jewelry ready to go. So if you've never done Prime Day deals with us before, or maybe this is your first experience with Jesse James Speeds, this deal is a great way to get you started, right? So also just a couple of other housekeeping notes. Um, don't forget there is free shipping in the US with $49 orders. That is always very much welcomed and appreciated. And for those of you who are international, save all of your order numbers until Friday and send hello at jessiejamesspeeds.com a message with all of your order numbers. They will combine the shipping so that you don't have to pay for each individual order's shipping to get it to you. So everybody can play, which is fantastic. All right, so what else? Well, let's talk about dress it up buttons. For those of you who do not know, Willow, do you have a tutorial for the earrings? I do, I'll have to find that for you. This was a project we did a couple weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I'll find that for you and post it. Um, so for those of you who do, don't know, Jesse James Beads is not just a singular company, right? Jesse James Beads' sister company that it all runs out of the same warehouse and is all headed by Jesse James himself is Dress It Up Buttons. So Dress It Up, did that even come out the way I meant for it to? <laughs> Dress It Up is a button company. It has really awesome buttons and embellishments and Jesse James Beads all together make two companies in one family, right? That's that's kind of what I was trying to say and couldn't, um, couldn't get the words out, you guys. It's still early. <laughs> it's still early, right? The day is new. <laughs> So anyway, the two companies are owned by the same family. That's the James family, both small businesses. And guys, they work so hard to give you the absolute best quality beads and best quality buttons that you can get in the industry. And so we figured today would be a really cool day to kind of mix those two brands together. So Dress It Up orders. So Dress It Up Shop is the website for Dress It Up buttons. Sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. <laughs> that was so rude. I'm so sorry. Um, 
all dress it up orders over $14 are going to ship for free. So not only are you getting your Prime Day deals for Jesse James Speeds, but we're also going to offer some Prime Day deals over on dressitupshop.com as well. So once again, $14 orders are going to ship for free and it is buy to get one on all packs of buttons. So that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. If you've not been over to dressitupshop.com yet, I highly, highly encourage you to go over there, sign up for the email, sign up for an account so that the next time you are ready to shop, if you don't shop today, which you should because it's a really good deal, <laughs> but the next time that you shop, you've already got an account ready to go. And if you sign up for the mailing list, you're always going to be on top of the deals. You will be in the know. So that's what we've got going on today, you guys really good stuff like you're getting prime deals from two websites which is amazing so for our project today i thought we could use some dress it up buttons so we're going to use these steamboat willie buttons there's mickey and minnie right and i'm going to show you how to turn these into because these are shank style buttons i'm going to show you how to use some wire to turn these into charms and we're going to make keychains with these so here are our little keychains you can grab these over on jesse james beads and so we're going to do two one to give and one to keep right one for your buddy one for your best friend one for your girlfriend one for your boyfriend whatever right we're going to do two one to give and one to keep and guys they are so cute and we're going to mix in some seed beads with this we're going to make some seed bead tassels to make them extra fun give them a little cha-cha pizzazz right so we're going to use some of the seed beads so we've got seed beads and dress it up buttons in the house yay all right rosanna says yay sell on embellishments right this sale was made for you friend i'm telling you made for you hey maggie hey wendy so i'm just gonna scroll through and say hey to everybody hey angie i did have a good birthday thank you thank you <laughs> wanda says sarah has taught us that buttons are beads i have taught you that and i'm gonna teach it to you again today <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey, Terry. Oh, she says she used to make brooches from the buttons. They make the most amazing brooches. You got to do that some more. Megan says she can't stop staring at my earrings. Thanks, you guys. We did these as a project not too long ago. And I can't, I was trying to think when I was getting ready today. I couldn't remember what the name of the mix was that we used for these, but we can drop the link to this project. I, they are some of my absolute favorites. And the mix that these came from, wish I could remember what it was, was probably in my top five all time favorite Jesse James Beads mixes. And so, of course, these earrings are just. I love them. I love them so much. All right, so let's get to it. Catherine, g'day from Australia. How are ya? Let's get down to business with this project, you guys. It's a fun one. All right, so let me turn you guys around, get my fingers out of the way. I always do that. All right, so the dress it up that we are looking at our Steamboat Willie. We've got Mickey Mouse. There are four little hearts in here. There is the ship wheel, and then you've got Minnie Mouse, and they are all shank style buttons. So they do have that shank on the back, which I have them out of the package. I don't know why I don't just show you this way. So you can see they have that shank on the back. So you can sew these into any of your craft projects that you want or you can snip the back, you can take the shank off and then glue these down to any of your craft projects, which is what makes Dress It Up so incredibly fun. It's the versatility that you're gonna get. So not only are you getting a button that you can use to sew, but you can also incorporate this into any of your craft projects because you can very easily turn these into a flat back that you can then use in so many creative ways. So these are the ones we're going to be using for our project today but do know that the little hearts are in as well the little shank on the back and the ship wheel okay so I'm going to show you how to take these guys and turn them into a charm not only does it work on these but it's going to work on any of your dress it up shank style buttons Okay, so keep that in mind, like definitely keep that in mind when you're going to head over to Dress It Up Shop and look at all of the buttons. And if you've never been to the website before, oh man, you are in for a treat because there is a button embellishment for everything you can think of, right? Okay, so 
let's get to it so i've got one of these in silver color and one of these in gold color so we're going to do one one way and one the other way they they essentially are going to go together the exact same way but we've got two colorways here to work with okay and as far as the seed beads i have seed beads from firecracker because there are nice bright pops of color i'm using the yellow from firecracker and then the ocean waves trio has these beautiful blues i'm using this bottom dark color blue with the yellow and these are going to be the accents for mickey and then for minnie because she has on this light blue dress or skirt with the polka dots we're going to use the lighter blue from the ocean waves so i've got it right here and then from antique lace which is another one of the trios just like these but it has some really beautiful neutral colors in it i have pulled out this really beautiful kind of pearlesque white from that mix so those are going to be the four seed bead colors that we use for our project and just a little side note you guys i didn't know i don't know if you know this or not but dress it up buttons is officially licensed to sell disney and that's that's kind of a big that's a big deal. Not just everybody can be licensed through Disney, right? So I just wanna give props to dress it up for that because that really is some, that really is an accomplishment, right? I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Not just anybody can sell Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to start out with Mickey here, and we're going to do the gold tone with Mickey. So I'm going to move Minnie out of the way just a little bit here, kind of move her over, and we're just going to kind of focus on Mickey for the moment. There's our keychain. All right, so you're going to need two pieces of wire. I'm using German style wire for this and i've got about five to six inches of this that might be a little bit more than what we need but it's better to be safe than sorry wanda says that's huge disney is very choosy uh, yes absolutely so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these pieces of wire so you need two pieces of wire and we're gonna do the exact same technique just in two different directions okay so what we need to do is we need to take this piece of wire and come to the back where the shank is on the back of the button and we want to thread this piece of wire through that shank and kind of find the middle it doesn't have to be exact but pretty close okay so now what we want to do and i'm actually going to i'm going to flip him over we're going to do the bottom first okay so i've got his feet up in the air we're going to take the wire and we just want to take the two wires and kind of bring them together okay and the wire that's going to be in the front which just happens to be the left-handed side for me okay this one that's now over here on the right i've crisscrossed and pulled down close to the shank i'm going to take this one that's over the top okay and i'm going to go all the way around the outside of the shank and then back up to the top okay so we've swirled around and then gone all the way around so that's what we've done now it's okay if you didn't get it the first time because we're going to do it one more time on this and then we do have to do mini too so you're going to see this exact technique more than once it's okay if you if you don't get it the first time okay so now we're back around up here to the top we've got our wires crossing now what I want to do is I want to create a wrapped loop with several wraps because there is a large surface area from the shank to the bottom of his foot and we need a loop so that we can hang a really cool tassel made out of our seed beads. So in order to do that, I have to kind of fill in this space in between the shank and the bottom of the button, okay? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our chain nose pliers and we're going to take one of those pieces of wire and we're going to give it a bend just just like so see the little it was just a very slight bend to make it go straight right and speaking of i'm going to straighten that wire out just a little bit okay now the other wire we want to bend it this way 
Okay, so we've created a little triangle shape here. We've got a wire going this way and a wire going straight up and down. Now the wire that's coming out over here to the side, we're gonna take it and wire wrap around this straight wire up to about halfway, okay? And you may need to take all of this and pop it up this direction, right? Away from the button so that you can get behind here in this space. Okay, now these wraps don't have to be beautiful by any means. Okay, so if your wire wraps are not super good, that's okay. That's okay. Totally fine. All of this is going to be to the back of the button and nobody is really going to see this anyway. So I'm just taking the short section of wire and I'm just going to wrap around the long section of the wire and we're going to go more than our regular three wraps, okay? We're gonna do, uh, let's say six wraps. So we're gonna double that up. One, two, three, can't really tell. Three, four, five, we got, we're gonna go one more. Okay, now if you don't have a large surface area here, you won't need all of these wraps, okay? All right, so we've gone halfway. We still are not to the bottom of the button yet, but that's okay because we have to do a wrapped loop here and wire wrap back the other direction, okay? So now what we wanna do is, I'm gonna kinda pinch on this a little bit, straighten up those wire wraps just a bit. I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim off that tail, okay? We don't need that. All right, now we're gonna create a wrapped loop on this side. Sorry, I feel like this background stuff is kind of getting in the way. Yes, I am using um, German style wire for this. I just, I don't generally use artistic wire for wire wrapping. It is just very, very soft. And I have, I have much better luck with my wrapping with the German style wire. All right, so I'm grabbing the wire right at the top of the last wrap around that we did with my chain nose pliers, okay? And I'm just gonna bend that wire just like we would if we were gonna do a wrapped loop on a bead, okay? I'm gonna take that away, and you can see we've got that space in between there. We're gonna come in with the round nose pliers, okay, and grab that, and we're gonna go up and over, roll the pliers out of the way, and take that wire on over to the other side. Now we're gonna wire wrap in the space between the loop and the last wrap that we made, to just kind of take those wire wraps and have them meet up with each other. And it's all right, you kind of have to push the button out of the way, you know, to get in there. That's all right, no problems. Because we are going to secure all of this down very, very shortly. All right, so we have met up with our wire wraps. We have the tail, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off. Don't need that. And yeah, turn my loop just a little bit, make sure that everything is nice and straight. So now you can see our loop that we created is right behind his foot, right at the base of our button, okay? So when we hang a tassel here, it's gonna have, you're not gonna see any of this wire wrapping. All of that is gonna be to the back, okay? All right. So before we move on, because we have to repeat this step the other direction, okay, so that we can attach this to our keychain, push down on the wraps around the shank, okay? Then you wanna come in with your pliers. You can use flat nose pliers for this or just your chain nose pliers and put your pliers on either side of the shank, right? On the outside of that wire and give it a squeeze, okay? And squeeze that wire nice and tight that's gonna make it stay in place. See now I can't wiggle this wire wrap up and pop it away from the button. We don't want it to be able to pop away from the button. We want it to be nice and tight and snug so that it stays in place, okay? So now when we're looking at him the right direction on the back, we've got our loop down here at the bottom. Now we need a loop up here at the top. The loop on the top, we're actually gonna add some seed beads to um, just for a little extra decoration. So I'm going to take some of these little yellow but or yellow buttons, yellow seed beads out, okay? 
And we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we are going to add some seed beads to this. So I've got my second piece of wire, and I'm gonna take that wire and into the shank, okay? Find the middle, okay? We're just working over the top of the wire that we, and there's plenty of room, you can see. Uh, that wire that we're using, because I'm using 22 gauge, it's really not taking up a lot of space within that shank. So there's enough room here, okay? Now we wanna take the two ends, bend until they crisscross up here at the top, right here, like two antenna, okay? Keep going. Pull that crisscross down so that now that crisscross is happening right above the top of the shank. Okay, now I'm gonna kinda angle it this way a little bit. See, I can still move it like this. I'm gonna do it like this. And I'm gonna take one of the wires and I'm gonna go all the way around the outside of the shank. Okay, right back up to the top and crisscross those wires again. So we just repeated the exact same thing that we did down here, up here, okay? Now, Stacia says, would E6000 glue to the wire, could you glue the wire down in addition to squeezing it? You absolutely could if you wanted to. Um, I, I generally don't because I feel like I've got it squeezed really, really nice and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, the E6000, if you were gonna use some glue back here, I would use the very smallest, smallest amount. I'm talking like a toothpick and just get in the little spaces underneath the wire, just right around the edge. Even though this is all on the back, it is a keychain, so there is some movement and you don't want a big glob of glue back here, right? So just keep that in mind. Yeah, you definitely can use the glue if you want to. I would just use the very, very tiniest amount. Okay, so our wires are crisscrossed again up here at the top, okay? And I can still move these wires away from the button, right? I can get my finger in between there, so I've got plenty of room. I'm going to go ahead and pull the wires down a little bit more. I'm gonna come in with my pliers. This wire, the longer piece, I'm just gonna bend it straight up and down, okay? Kind of straighten it out. This wire, I'm gonna bend it to the right. So we have that little triangle shape there, okay? Now, I'm gonna kinda of pull this away from the button and I'm gonna take the shorter section and wire wrap around the straight section and I'm gonna wire wrap about three or four times and then we're gonna add some seed beads and actually, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do more than three or four. I think I'm gonna do, let's see. Let's do about six, sort of like what we did on the bottom, just to kind of keep all the, um, the numbers even. It really doesn't make much of a difference, to be completely honest with you. Um, you don't have to count your wraps if you don't want to, but if you are counting, it just makes it more easy to remember, six down here and six up here. Okay, so there are our wire wraps, and you can see there's still a section of wire that is going behind the top of Mickey, and we're gonna fill that in with some seed beads instead of the wire wraps, just so that there's some color coming out the back. So I'm gonna trim off, okay? And now we have just one single wire to work with. I'm gonna thread on about seven seed beads. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and drop those down. Now when you're looking at it from the front, you can see that little color peeking through. <coughs> Excuse me. On the back, you can see some of those seed beads are actually back behind the button, which is totally fine. Okay, so now we wanna do another wrapped loop. So I'm gonna grab that wire right at the top of that last seed bead with my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab that wire and bend, make a really sharp bend Okay, take the pliers away. We've got that space right there between the top of the button and the bend in the wire. That's the perfect place to come in with your round nose pliers so that the wire is running between the barrel of the pliers. Okay, now we're gonna take this wire and go up and over the top barrel of the pliers. We're not moving the tool, we're just moving the wire. 
Okay, so that's the first step. Now we're going to move the tool and not the wire, and we're just going to roll the pliers this way. Okay, so we, we went from this position to this position. Okay. Now we can take the wire over to the other side and we've got that small amount of space between the loop and the last bead and we can wire wrap right there. Okay, and now we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and trim off our tail. All right, so now when we look at it from the front, we have our wrapped loop. You've got another loop down here on the bottom that's just kind of peeking out behind his shoe and we're ready to add this to something. But before we do that, we do want to come in and give this another squeeze. And this time I'm gonna use my flat nose pliers just because I feel like I never use these for anything. <laughs> and they have a nice surface area. They have a nice wide surface area. So I can really get in here and squeeze those wire wraps around that shank to make sure everything is nice and tight so this one's still moving a little bit see how i've got that movement this one not so much so that means i need to squeeze it some more and if you're like stacia you can come in with your glue if you want to just use the very smallest amount all right now i've squeezed it so tight that now it's not going to it's not going to move anymore okay if you want to add glue there, you absolutely can. If you squeeze tight enough, you're probably not going to need it. But hey, you know, you do what works for you. I, I'm just giving you the, <laughs> the ideas, right? Just giving you the ideas. I'm just the idea person. All right, so now we have a loop on the top and the bottom. So what are we going to do now? Well, let's make a little tassel for the bottom here. And to create our tassel, and actually, you know what? I messed this up. <laughs> that's okay you guys will see what I'm talking about here in just a second so I was trying to keep one gold and one silver and I, I kind of made a boo-boo here so I we're gonna make some little seed beads on some head pins some little sticks here <laughs> and I did those on silver and this is the gold color but that's okay right it's okay makes no difference totally fine so basically to do this part what we're gonna do and I'll just go ahead and continue using the silver I'm just gonna thread on a series of beads onto a head pin okay and this mat that I have up here is like the worst for threading on seed beads so I'm moving my seed beads down here if you're wondering why this mat up here on the top just gets really, really fuzzy and everything sticks to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna thread on some seed beads here. Oops. Okay, thread on some seed beads, about the same length as the rest of those. And I'm gonna create a wrapped loop right here at the top. Okay, so just bend the wire, just following the same steps. Okay, and we're gonna turn all of these little seed bead sticks into a really fun tassel to just add some more movement and color to our keychain. So we're gonna hang these from the bottom of Mickey and then we will add him to our keychain. So that's all you have to do. You just want to put together several of these. I did a lot of these ahead of time so that we didn't have to spend a whole lot of time doing this. So I've got six in yellow and then I do want some blue. So I wanna use this beautiful blue color. Let's see here. Angie says, can the seed beads be off brand since you're using it for a tassel? Well, you know, that's completely up to you, but I'm a huge, huge fan <laughs> of the Toho seed beads over on the Jesse James Speed site. And they just so happen to be, you can get a free trio of seed beads with a $24 cart today. So I definitely recommend these. I mean, for one thing, they're Toho's. So of course the colors are vibrant and rich and they are consistent in their shape. So Jesse James Beads, they, they picked out like the top of the top when it comes to seed beads. 
All right, so I'm just gonna do, we need one more of the blue, so I'm gonna thread some blue onto a head pin. Okay, thread on some seed beads, another wrapped loop here, and then we're gonna put all of this together and you'll see how cute. All right, so there's our wrapped loop on the top of that one. We're gonna trim off. All right. Now, we're gonna put this together with a series of jump rings. I'm gonna use some four millimeter jump rings for this, which are kind of small, um, but if you, if you prefer size six, or I'm sorry, six millimeter jump rings, you definitely can do that instead, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these four millimeter jump rings, I'm gonna open it up with my pliers and I'm gonna thread on one of the blue and one of the yellow, okay? And then I'm gonna close that back. Now I'm gonna open another jump ring and I'm gonna thread that onto the jump ring, whoops, that we just closed, okay? And now I'm gonna thread on one blue and one yellow and close that back. We're just gonna repeat this until we have used up all of our seed bead sticks that we have created and it's gonna make a really fun little tassel so again, another seat, or not, not, not another seat beat, another jump ring onto the jump ring we just closed. Add one of each color. Okay. And then close. Another jump ring. Now, part of the reason that I chose the four millimeter jump rings for this is because they don't take up too much space. It keeps everything kind of nice and compact in the center here. Um, but if the four millimeters, like I said, if that's just too small for you to mess with, I know the four millimeter jump rings are very tiny. Um, you definitely can do it with six. Just know that your center point of your tassel kind of the tree trunk, if you will, is gonna be a little bit wider. Okay, another four millimeter jump ring to the jump ring we just added. And we've got one more to go. Could close that back up. And let's see here. And the opening on this one. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this is the last one. I'm gonna thread it on to that top jump ring that we just added. Each one of our little seed bead sticks, if you will. <laughs> and now before I close this jump ring, I wanna add this to that loop on the very bottom of our Mickey. So bottom loop, and then I'm just gonna take my chain nose pliers and close that. So now, look how fun. We have this really fun tassel hanging off, off the bottom, right? We've turned our little Mickey Mouse shank style button into a really fun charm that has lots of movement and fun color on the bottom. And now all we need to do is just add this to our keychain. I'm just gonna use a six millimeter jump ring to do that. So I'm just gonna open the six millimeter jump ring, thread that through that top loop, and then add it to the chain on our keychain. 
and there you go. And you have a really fun, fun keychain. This one is so much fun, right? Yes, Wanda, you could definitely turn these into earrings if you didn't want to do a keychain. Trying to, the computer, <laughs> double checking the time here. All right, so we need to do this to Minnie. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna do the entire Minnie Mouse, but I am gonna repeat the wire part on the back okay because i want you to get that part because you definitely can use this wire technique for any of the dress it up buttons that you would like to add to your cart today <laughs> okay so we're going to go through that wire wrapping thing one more time on the back of mini and then i will let you guys go so that you can do some of your shopping okay so Let's just go through the basics of this one more time, okay? We've got our Minnie Mouse, she's got a shank on the back. Now notice, the placement of her shank is a little bit different than Mickey's, and that's okay. The shank on her is a little bit further down, right? So we have more surface area on the top than on the bottom, whereas with Mickey, he had more surface area on the bottom. All right, so we are just going to repeat this process. Let me get some two more pieces of wire. I don't know why I didn't pre-cut, but okay. So I've got the German style wire here. Give yourself about five or six inches, okay? Take one of those pieces, let's start on the bottom. We're gonna take, so I've turned her upside down. Take that wire, thread it through the shank, right? Find the middle, take the two wires, bring those together so that they crisscross, okay? Go ahead and deepen that crisscross so it is really close to the shank. See how close I got? Now I'm gonna use this one that is now over here on the right and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna continue moving it. I'm gonna go all the way around the outside, whoops, <laughs> the outside of the shank back up here to where we started, okay? And now the wires are crisscrossing again. Okay, now I can move them away from the button so I can get my fingers in there, right? I'm gonna take the longer wire and bend it straight up and down. It does have a little kink in it. Let me straighten that out a little bit, okay? And then the wire that's coming off to this side, I'm gonna take my pliers and give it a little bend so that it is now definitely coming out this direction, okay? Now we're gonna wire wrap, and I'm gonna wire wrap, since we don't have so much, we don't have a ton of surface area down here to work with, I'm going to only do about four wraps, okay? And then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim that off. Because remember, we have to do wire wraps coming the other direction as well. So I wanna be sure that I leave room for those. See how we still have a little bit of space here between the last wrap and the bottom of the button. So now I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers, grab that wire right above that last wrap that we made, bend the wire, and we're gonna do another wrapped loop. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in the round nose pliers. Okay, up and over. Roll those pliers out of the way and take the wire on over to the other side. And now we're just gonna wire wrap until we meet up with the last wire wrap that we made. Okay, and you do kind of have to navigate around the button. That's okay, just kind of move the wire around, move the button out of the way. Okay, and now I'm gonna come to the back of this wire and trim that off, okay? And then I am gonna kinda, oh, I didn't get that one close. I am gonna kinda squeeze on my wire wraps a little bit, tighten everything up, make sure everything's nice and straight, okay? So now we have a loop here on the bottom that's just gonna peek out behind her foot, right, where we can hang our tassel. And we need to repeat up here on this side so that we can have another loop. I am gonna come in and squeeze the outer edges here. The wire, just squeezing it in nice and tight. So now it doesn't move, right? 
before I could lift that wire up, now I can't because I, I went in and squeezed it really, really tight. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat this, but on the top, and we're gonna add a few seed beads to this as well. So same thing, okay? We're just going in the opposite direction. Give yourself about five or six inches of German style wire, thread that through the shank, okay? Find the middle, take the two ends of the wire, bring those together and crisscross, okay? Now, one of them continue to crisscross, pull it down deep, right? In that crisscross, and then go all the way around the outer shank of the button, right back up to the top, and now our wires are crisscrossing again, okay? Now, want to do the exact same thing. Want to create a, a, a wire wrap here. So I'm gonna bend one of the wires straight up and down, one of them off to the side, okay? Now I'm gonna wire wrap. I'm gonna wire wrap about three times, and then we're gonna add some seed beads here, okay? So I like to hold my little crisscross with my, Wanda says, are you going over or next to the previous wrap around the shank? I'm going right over the top of it. Just right over the, I'll show you what the side view looks like here in just a second so you can, you can kind of, you can get a better idea of what I mean. All right, now I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, straighten that wire up. All right, and you can see we still have some of the back of the button here. So we're gonna come in with some seed beads and we want these to match many here. So I'm gonna thread on about seven, three, whoops four, five, six, and seven. Drop those down. You can see those are going to kind of come up from behind her, right? We're gonna come back here to the back again. How did I attach the tassel? I'll show you. I just attached it with a series of jump rings, okay? Bend the wire and then create your wrapped loop. And then Wanda, I'll show you the side of this so that you can kind of see how the two different pieces of wire are in relation to each other. Okay, just gonna wire wrap right here. And then I wanna trim that off. Okay, so now, Looking at it from the side, you can see one of them is on the bottom. I know that might be kind of hard to see, but the original wire with the wire wraps here on the bottom, that's the one closest to the back of the button, right? That's the one that's touching the back of the button. The one that we just did with a new piece of wire is over the top. So it's not actually touching the button, it's touching the first layer of wire, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so now this one's still wiggly. I don't want any wiggle. So I am gonna come in with my pliers and pinch all of this down. Tighten it all up. Does take a little finessing, that's okay. Just come in and you just really wanna get in there and squeeze that wire all the way around that shank. Get nice and tight and now we don't have any movement here, right? Now it's in place, it's not gonna move on us. Okay, so now we turn it around and we've got a loop on the top for attaching to our keychain and then we have a loop on the bottom here where we can attach our tassel. Since we have a few minutes and since Suzanne asked, I will show you the, um, the other tassel real quick. Let me grab two head pins. So, all I did for the tassel was just used, I'm making it, I have a big mess of seed beads here, you guys. So we just made a few of these. So we're doing white with mini. So we need 
let's see, we've got four, five. I need one more of the white and one more of this blue color. So we'll do those real quick. Let's see, two, three. Oops. Okay. There are those. I'll do the wire wrapping here in just a second to just kind of save some time. Let me pour out some of the white. And Okay, now we'll do our quick wire wraps here. I'll definitely speed through these. So we've done a bunch of these today. Okay, so we've got six of our little seed bead sticks in the white and we've got six in the blue and we are going to use a series of four millimeter jump rings to build our tassel. And then we're gonna use a single six millimeter jump ring to attach it to our keychain or actually to the bottom of our Minnie Mouse, and then we will attach it to our keychain. I know there are some questions going by, guys, that I have missed. I am so sorry. I, um, I always seem to miss a few, so don't think that I'm ignoring you. It's that sometimes they go by pretty quick and I don't see them in time by the time I look back up again. Okay, so there are our sticks. We're gonna put these together just really, really quickly here with a series of jump rings. So I'm gonna take one of the jump rings here, open it up. I'm gonna thread on one blue. Oh, <laughs> or not. I may just pop that right out of my hands. All right, so one blue, one white, and now I'm gonna close this jump ring back, okay? Open another jump ring. Thread it onto the jump ring we just closed, okay? Another blue. And then another white. Close that jump ring. Okay, and we're just gonna keep going. We've got four more to go, four more series of jump rings is what we've got here. And, whoops, can't seem to get a hold of this one. Okay, one blue, one white, and close. So we're just kind of making a cluster here and it looks really, really cool with the seed beads, but you can also do this exact same technique with any of your favorite Jesse James beads to create really fun tassels or bead clusters that then you can turn into earrings or pendants. A lot of different ways you can use this kind of cluster technique. It's, it's one of my favorites. I use it very, very often in my own designs just because I really love the look of a cluster of beads together, particularly when they're super shiny <laughs> and sparkly. It's a nice cluster of sparkle and shine. Who doesn't like that, right? But it does look really cool with your gemstone beads as well. You know, it, it's very rich when you use a gemstone to make a cluster, right? It, it looks very luxurious. All right, so this is our last jump ring. I'm gonna thread on the last little blue and the last of the white. And now before I close this jump ring, I want to attach this to that bottom loop that is right on her foot. And then very carefully come in and close that jump ring back 
And now we have our really cool blue and white tassel on the bottom of our mini. And the only thing that is left is just to add her to our keychain. So I'm just gonna use a six millimeter jump ring. I'm gonna thread that on, and then I'm going to thread that on to the little chain section of our keychain, and she is done. And we did two, wow. I didn't know we were gonna have time to get both of those done. But yeah, so we've got a Mickey and a Minnie. You've got one to give, one to keep. There are still some little hearts and the ship wheel that are left over. You could make even more if you wanted to. You could turn the little hearts into extra little charms to add to your tassel at the bottom. Please excuse the seed bead mess. <laughs> they kind of ended up everywhere. But yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. I love using dress it up buttons in fun and creative ways and to kind of incorporate them into jewelry making, if you will. I mean, I know it's a keychain, but you very easily could turn these into earrings or into a fun pendant for a really cute necklace anything like that that you wanted to do. So I, I hope you guys really kind of see the versatility of Dress It Up buttons. The shank style buttons and the sew on buttons are so much fun to work with. I really, oh, sorry, really have enjoyed getting to play around with those. All right, I'm gonna turn you around and I'll hold these up so that you guys can see them. And we'll go right back over the deals for the day because they're so darn good. All right, so here's our Mickey. How cute is that, right? That is adorable. I love it. I love classic Mickey Mouse and oh, such a good one. So there's one to give or to keep. And then you've got an extra one here to give or to keep. Little Minnie Mouse with her fun little tassel as well. Super cute. Lots and lots of fun. Suzanne says, oh no, commingling. I know, my seed beads are commingling and now I have to, <laughs> to clean them all up and give them a lecture. <laughs> all right, guys, it has been so much fun. I'm so glad that you came to hang out with me today and um, enjoyed this project. I think it's a fun one. I think it's cool to mix and match or dress it up with your Jesse James beads. I mean, the, the creation possibilities are absolutely limitless, you know? So on that note, let's end for the day. Well, not for the day, but for the morning. Um, don't forget your free seed bead trios with a $24 cart over on Jesse James Beads. Free shipping with $49 orders in the US and over on Dress It Up, you can get, let's see, buy two, get one free button packs on dressitupshop.com. Um, and the orders over there that are $14 carts are gonna ship for free. So take advantage, guys. Not only do we have Prime Day deals for Jesse James beads, but we also have them over on dressitupshop.com as well, which is pretty awesome in my book. So definitely take advantage of those. Those sales are going to switch to something new later today. So take advantage now and then come back and join us again later today. I will see you guys again tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time with another fun project and another great deal. So be looking forward to that. Set your notifications, mark your calendar, keep checking your emails uh, for all of the notifications for the next deals that are coming up for our Prime Day sales over at Jesse James Speeds. And have a great afternoon, you guys. I will see you guys again in a few hours. Bye, guys.